everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today I'm going to take you through skimmer maintenance. I'm going to do a full breakdown and clean on my NIOS Quantum 120 skimmer, show you how I clean it, how we assemble and disassemble it, and talk a little bit about the maintenance on skimmers. But before I get into that, as you can see the glass is pretty dirty, so just give me a second while I clean that up. As you can see there's snail eggs floating around everywhere, but the fish will eat that. Uh, I generally clean my glass maybe two to three times a week, and I clean the back panel once a week, uh, if that. Um, it's As you saw, it's quite difficult to clean the back panel on my tank, and it's probably the only regret I have about the design of this particular tank, and having it so close to the wall has made it very difficult for me to clean the back glass. I have thought about putting a uh, black cover on it and then never cleaning it, but uh, yeah, for now I haven't. And uh, as you can see, there are parts on the back glass that are now essentially uh, have very strong permanently bonded algae onto the glass and my, my magnetic flipper won't get that off. I'd have to get in there with a razor blade in my hand and manually scrape that off, which is very difficult to do as well. Uh, I will get around to doing it eventually, but the problem is if I go away on holiday or don't clean the, black, the back glass for another week or two, um, there's a tendency for that algae to get stuck on there again and uh, the magnetic cleaner won't, won't get it off um, when the algae's been there for too long. How often do you clean your glass? Post down in the comments below and let, let me know how often you clean the glass on your tank. Uh, and whether it's because A, the tank doesn't need to be cleaned that often, or B, because you're lazy and you let it get really bad before you clean it. But yeah, the main topic for today's video is I'm going to show you how I do maintenance on my skimmer. Now this isn't just cleaning the cup, this is full breakdown, tear down of the skimmer, deep cleaning, reassembly and put back together. Uh, most skimmer manufacturers recommend that you do this um, every few months, but the reality is most people would do it once every 6 to 12 months, or as needed. Uh, I can't remember the last time I did it, I, I think we're sitting at about 6 months since I did it. Uh, so we'll, we'll get in there, I'm not too, too sure on how dirty my skimmer actually is, but uh, we'll, we'll get in there, we'll take a look and I'll, I'll show you how it all works and how I go about doing a deep clean on the skimmer. Alright, so here we are down in my sump, uh, and as you can see it's absolutely chockers with equipment. I have this custom made Himali dosing reservoir at the front here, which is holding the uh, reagent for my uh, KH lab. Uh, this is uh, alkalinity, calcium and magnesium, and then this one here is reef anabolics boron, or uh, reef booster. Um, the reef anabolics trace are also mixed into uh, the, these, these ones as well, the calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Uh, my consumption on these is really low at the moment because I'm gradually weaning the tank off to part and onto the calcium reactor as I ran you through in my last video. Mounted to the ceiling here, as you can see, is my core 7. Um, on the right hand side here is the KH lab. I'm using this multicolored RO tubing to run from this reservoir up into the KH, uh, the, the core 7 and then I'm using this soft silicon tubing to go from the uh, core 7 down into the tank for all of the dosing. Um, here is this black unit here is my Santa Monica Rain 2 algae turf scrubber. This middle compartment here is holding a Mantis uh, carbon block and Mantis bio blocks. Um, this chamber here has the return pump as well as some uh, marine pure cubes. Um, and then this chamber here, along with the rain tube, has more marine pure cubes and the skimmer, as well as you might see here um, some lines that return into this reactor here, which is my um, phosphate resin reactor. Um, that's running off a small CJ pump. Uh, this unit here is my Pacific Sun. Uh, CO2 scrubber, the medium sized one. 
Um, and I've had this now for about three months, four months, and I've so far only had to change the media once. And as you can probably see from the, uh, the color, it goes from blue to white. Um, it's about halfway depleted right now. So where the, uh, the media is blue, that means it's been expended. And where the media is white, that means it's still uh, active. And the way this works is the air intake for the skimmer here sucks air through this reactor which scrubs out the CO2 so the skimmer is essentially uh, supercharging the water um, with hyper oxygenated air um, because it's pulling all the carbon dioxide out of the air um, on that air intake for the skimmer. Uh, at the back here this big reactor is my calc stirrer, it's the Vast Marine K1 uh, calc wasser stirrer um, and my uh, there's a little single channel dosing pump, a coral box um, Wi-Fi dosing pump there that runs that reactor um, about uh, one and a half litres a day I think I'm currently pushing through that um, which is most of my evaporation from my tank the, the rest of the evaporation is handled through the ATO feature of the Smart AWC Touch which also does my auto water changes of about uh, two to three percent per day on the back wall, you can also see the controller for my Maxbeck Turbine Duo return pump, and then the controller for my um, uh, gyres and my, um, I've got two different models of gyre, so there's two different um, controllers for them. Um, although this one is capable of running two gyres, it's currently only running one. Yeah, there's a bit of a mess of cables as you can see, and gradually I do want to clean that up and make all the dosing lines neater and cleaner. And, it's a work in progress. Um, now, I'm also running one filter sock because the return here splits into two. The right side here goes, is directly hard plumbed into the algae turf scrubber. The left side here goes um, straight into a filter sock. And that filter sock is currently overflowing. Um, that's what that waterfall noise is. Um, so I'm just gonna go put some gloves on and um, before we disassemble and clean up this skimmer, I'll, I'll remove that, um, that filter sock. Find the pink rubber kitchen gloves are invaluable in working on anything in your sump. Um, I learned a long time ago to just wear these kind of gloves when working in the sump because there's a lot of things in here that are sharp and will give you micro abrasions on your fingers which get really sore and can get infected and also there's just the risk of bristle worms and things like that. Now I have two filter socks that I alternate. So here's a clean one here. These aren't the big woolen filter socks. These are just a, um, a, a fine, thin mesh kind of filter sock. Um, so you don't need to wash these uh, in the washing machine or anything. I just rinse them in the sink and let them dry. And then uh, when one's full, I swap out the for the other one as I'm about to do. All right, so here's the full one. Just like that clean. And I'll put the clean one in. I'll just run this over to the sink. All right, now, so I've got myself a bucket and just a little towel, and I'm going to now disassemble the skimmer and get that out of the tank. So first things first is I need to unplug it. Now I'm pretty sure the skimmer is the completely furthest away plug, so it's the absolute hardest one to access. So I haven't really designed that. I haven't really designed that particularly well, but let's see if I can get into it to unplug it. I have plenty of room for my hand. I'll just unplug that. Yep, that was the skimmer. I can see there the uh, all the bubbles um, disappearing. So I'm just going to push that plug out back of the tank so that I can feed the cord back through and around. You see some people's tanks online where they have the most amazing cable management where every cable has got its own particular route and housed and is clipped in place real nicely. That's not my tank. The back of this tank behind where no one can see it is an absolute mess of cables. Okay, so I'm going to take the skimmer cup off and then I'll quickly go put that in the sink. Okay and now I'm going to disconnect 
the CO2 scrubber line from the skimmer air intake. Like that. I'm going to lift up the whole unit. into this bucket. There we go, got it. All right, the skimmer is out. Mm, yeah, there's a lot of silt on the bottom of my sump as well, so at some point I need to vacuum out the bottom of the sump, but uh, I think I might save that for another day. We'll see how we go. For now, I'm gonna let's come over to the sink and we're gonna disassemble and clean this skimmer. All right, so to start off with, let's do the easy stuff. We'll just clean the skimmer cup and anything else like that filter sock that I can just do with running water in the sink. So as I was talking about with this filter sock, um, because it's not the fluffy woolen one and it's just this uh, thin material, you can just uh, basically give it a rub against each itself and they clean up really nicely just in the sink like this. There we go, comes up relatively clean, clean enough anyway, and uh, then I'll just put this aside back underneath my sump off to the side and let it dry and in about a week I'll be swapping it back for the other filter sock. Alright and the filter cup itself. So my skim is set to a relatively dry skim as you can see it's pretty thick and gross. Um, I, it, there, there is always a bit of a debate between wet skims and dry skims but in my opinion the reality is a wet skim is superior. If you want to remove more nutrients run a wet skim. However it's more maintenance, it's going to fill the cup quicker, it's going to take more water out of your tank and you know there's considerations around that. For me because my skimmer is more of a secondary piece of equipment on the tank, it's not doing much of the nutrient reduction, most of that's being handled by my algae turf scrubber. I run a dry skim and the, mo the main purpose of the skimmer in that case is actually for oxygenation and pH control within the tank, particularly now that I'm running a calcium reactor. Um, so yeah, this is about a week of skim in my tank running at a dry skim, so it's fairly ineffective for nutrient control, but still, that's pretty gross and I won't be pouring this back into the tank, that's for sure. Now when cleaning a skimmer cup, it is really important to clean the inside of the neck of the skimmer because that's the part that actually reduces skimmer performance the most once it gets gummed up. Now with this NIOS skimmer, it's uh, a pressure seal with an O-ring, so it just slots in and does a quarter turn and then that makes pressure around this O-ring. So it is important that you clean the O-ring and make sure that that's uh, got no detritus on it so that it forms a nice good seal once it's back on the main body. And I always clean the underside of the top of the lid as well. So that's the easy part done. Now let's have a look at the skimmer body and see what we're in for. So as you can see, it's pretty dirty. Um, there's some uh, calcifying worms, like, um, I forget the name, I think they're some type of a, a feather worm that have started growing on it. So that's, uh, they'll need to be scraped off. Um, we've got, a bit of detritus building up in the venturi, which is the intake here, which we'll need to clean out. And as well as that's a sponge that's growing on it. Um, definitely a line along the top where there's been a bit of calcification or um, build up of calcium carbonate. Yeah, so I think it's definitely due for a full teardown. Now the way that this particular skimmer is disassembled is you take out each of these four titanium screws um, and then that will allow this whole main body piece to separate from the foot. And then from there, there's two more screws on the inside which hold the pump in place. And from that point, essentially the whole thing will be fully disassembled. So all that's really needed to disassemble this is a flathead screwdriver, 
or you could use a 20 cent coin or anything you want to take out these screws because they're, they're not in particularly tight. This is acrylic after all, so you don't need to really wrench it tight. So let me just go and get something to undo these screws and I'll, then I'll change the camera angle so you can see and we'll start disassembling. All right, because it's quick and easy, I'm just gonna use a teaspoon to undo these screws because that will just, it's all we need to, basically you just need to crack the seal on the screws and from that point on you can do it entirely by hand. There we go, and one more. So all of those screws are now loose, so I'll be able to just take them off. And I don't even need to take them all out all the way out because this piece here, as you can see, holds down um, on the body. So I just need to take them out enough so that that piece is loose enough that it's going to let the body slip loose. All right, and then you need to remove this part. And the whole thing should just lift up like that. Okay, put that aside. Now, this top piece, you can fully disassemble it, but I don't think we need to. I'll be able to just clean it as one unit like that. And then for the pump itself, you can, um, for the quarter turn, you can remove this front plastic piece like that. And then you can pull that out. And then gently remove the whole impeller and drive unit. And as you can see, that's got a bit of spongy type growth on it that I want to clean off as well. Um, and I will remove the pump too. So let's take out those four screws. So that's it. That's fully disassembled. Now, obviously, there's a fair bit of detritus on all this stuff so initially I'm just going to rinse it all um, and see how much of that comes off and, and that will determine whether we need to soak this whole uh, or any of this equipment in vinegar to dissolve certain stuck on calcium uh, deposits. Well, as you can see, that didn't require much cleaning to come up pretty well. Um, as they say, that's good enough for the girls I go out with. So um, this piece I'm just going to put now back in this bucket to signify that it is finished um, and ready to be disassembled and we'll move on to the next piece. As you can see, I did end up disassembling this piece as there was some detritus in places that wasn't coming out with just the rinsing I was giving it. Now this is the, uh, the motor impeller um, and you want to be careful with these, particularly with the, the ceramic shaft. Um, uh, although with most skimmers you can get a replacement, it's going to be a pain to do so and if you can avoid breaking it, you definitely want to do that. Okay, not a bit clean. See now this bit has um, some worm growth on it the, where they've laid down a calcium carbonate based skeleton um, which is a little bit harder to remove. Now it's not too bad on this piece, so I'm just going to scrape it off with the, uh, the teaspoon that I have here um, and it'll all come up quite easily. However, if this build-up was a lot more significant, the only way to get it off without damaging um, the acrylic would be to soak it in um, a mixture of uh, water and vinegar um, or water and citric acid. Um, at a, a fairly weak ratio, so I'm talking like one to five or less um, in the ratio of water to um, citric acid or vinegar, depending on the strength of your vinegar, and that will simply dissolve the calcium carbonate and not affect the plastic. But if there's only a small amount, like on this one, you can just scrape it off um, gently with a teaspoon. 
because the build-up won't be that strong. body itself is where you're most likely to have stronger deposits of um, a calcium carbonate or the growth of organisms that lay down a calcium carbonate skeleton as you can see all of this white on the black pump here. Um, so this is the most likely piece that you're going to need to soak in order to properly clean. Mine is currently I'd say borderline. Um, so I am going to soak this um, to just clean it up as good as new. Um, but before I do that, it's best to just clean off as much of the easy to remove detritus as you can. leaves us with the main body which is obviously pretty easy to clean particularly with a brush to soak a piece of equipment in order to dissolve and remove white calcium carbonate type deposits from it is put it in a bowl like that, fill it with water and then add some vinegar um, and it doesn't need to be exact, just guesstimate, you're going for like a ratio of one to five kind of thing, five parts water to one part vinegar. So I just basically filled the um, the bowl to the top there, um, minus a centimetre or two, and then just fill the rest with vinegar. Um, and you just want to leave that for an hour or two. If after that time um, you think it's not really working and the, it, the, the calcium de deposits aren't just rubbing off or scrubbing off really easily at that point, just th throw away the water and start again with new fresh um, water and vinegar. It might take one or two hours to really um, really get it, particularly where you've got lots and lots of calcium carbonate deposit. So yeah, I'll uh, come back in an hour or two and then we'll um, see how it's going and hopefully reassemble the skimmer. Alright, so it's been about an hour, so let's check on this and uh, see how it's going. Now if it's been long enough, what you should find is that all the white should just basically rub off really easily. and. From the looks of it, it's going to. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a scrub, and what all should just be coming off with like minimal force or just powder, like essentially powdering and dissolving it when you rub it. Even like the bigger bits like that should be pretty brittle now and just come off pretty easily. As you can see, it's, it's all just coming straight off now. What the, uh, the vinegar or the citric acid, um, whatever you choose to use, does is it essentially um, dissolves calcium carbonate. What it doesn't dissolve becomes really, really porous and brittle, so it comes off much easier, breaks the bond with whatever it's attached to. And if in doubt, just the rope that's uh, really stuck on and it's not coming off easily, just uh, let it soak longer and if you're um, still having trouble with it, make the solution slightly stronger. But longer is better with a weaker solution than less time with a stronger solution because it can, I'm told, affect um, plastic, uh, certain types of plastic over time. It can make them brittle, so yeah, it's better to just take it slow. Just 
any stubborn bits that remain you can just kind of grind with a, a little teaspoon or something like this. Oh, that's looking pretty good, that's come up basically like new. Just an hour, a bit of vinegar and water. Okay, good, I'm gonna give it up. So just uh, give it a rinse with fresh water, get all the vinegar off it. All right, now it's time to reassemble. Jeez. Pretty simple. I'm just gonna put it back together in the reverse order to what we took apart. So, starting with the base and the pump. And there were two little acrylic feet here that go into the bottom of the pump. And then the orientation with the base is, you know, the, the cutout in the base for the cable. Well, that should tell you the orientation. Line up the holes where the screws go. And uh, we'll start threading these screws back in. Now, the right tool for the job is probably a flathead screwdriver, but, you know, in reality, the right tool for the job is whatever works. And in this case, the handle of my teaspoon. Sort of works. <laughs> and I don't drop it. Alright, now the pump is screwed back on, we need to start putting it back together, so that just goes in there. Then we have this bit, which goes in there. So, then there is this bit, which holds it all in place and flips on a quarter turn. Like that. This bit just sits on top like that. And then this right there. Yep. Yeah. Now we just have all of these hold the body down. Alright, so that's the skimmer put back together and clean. One more thing to do is just to put it back in the sump. Alright, so now I just need to put the skimmer back in the sump and feed the power cable back through again and we'll be good to go. One thing with having so much stuff in a sump is it is a bit of a balancing juggling act to get everything in there. You can see the blocks are tumbling all over the place. I have way too many of them. Uh, and I'm going to mess up a bit of detritus in doing this, but that's okay. Once I turn the skimmer on it, we'll probably suck most of it straight up. Now it's important to make sure that the plug is dry before you plug it in. So let's just do that. Now I'm going to feed the cable back through and get this going again. Oh, and while I remember, plug my CO2 scrubber back into the air intake on the skimmer. Ah, the art of plugging in power plugs completely blind. And voila, it's 
a lot when you see the bubbles. Now, after cleaning a skimmer like that, you might need to retune it. Um, I found my Nios to be pretty good, actually. I, I very rarely need to retune it, um, mostly because I have it set to run fairly dry anyway, so that gives me a fair bit of tolerance. But with, depending on your brand and the type of skimmer and how much organics is in your water, uh, everyone's results will vary. Um, but yeah, we'll check on this in 12 hours and I might tweak it if I need to. If not, I'll just leave it be. But yeah, that's uh, enough tank maintenance for one day. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions on other maintenance or things you'd like to know about um, my system or my sump or any video ideas, feel free to post them in the comments below. My name is Marcus. You've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.